I now want to shift focus to our stop story, and that is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Bangladesh. It is an extremely important visit, comes at a very important time. As far as Bangladesh is concerned, there are celebrations, and three celebrations. One, the birth of Bangladesh 50 years ago. Two, freedom from Pakistan. And remember, India played a very crucial role in the birth of Bangladesh, where in 13 days, there was virtually a blitz. The Indian Army reached Dhaka. 93,000 Pakistan Army soldiers led by General A.A.K. Niazi surrendered to Lieutenant General Arora and Bangladesh was born. Of course, the third reason for celebration today is the birth centenary celebrations of Bangbandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Prime Minister Narendra Modi flew into Dhaka. Incidentally, this is the first flight of the new Air India 1, which came to India in October 2020. But this is the Prime Minister's first flight abroad in COVID times. Geeta Mohan is on Ground Zero. She sent us this report. After Prime Minister's tribute to Bangladesh war heroes, the stage is set for the second and unmissable highlight of his two-day Bangladesh visit. The much-awaited temple visit to Matua community dominated Urakandi. This is Hori Temple, the birthplace of Horita Thakur, who formed the Matua sect, an influential group among Bengal's scheduled caste community. That's the Thakurbari temple representing the Matwa community. Harish Chand Thakur was the man who founded the temple. And today, the Matwa community in West Bengal is highly influenced by this temple. This is the sect that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be wooing here in Thakurbari in Gopal Ganj. Uh, important by Guru Tupunami Monekori among Eta Amade Motu other Jono, Ectis Honmane by Godbero Bishoi. Uni Ashten, Ete Amra Otanto Anondito, Ebong Amra Utsasito, Uni Urakan de Takurbari Tese, Puja Deben. The Matua community is excited by Prime Minister's visit and want Indian citizenship for those from their group who are settled in India. Motua there, Je Shurakai, Shuraka Dile, Amra Shitai, Asharagbo, Barto Podan Mundrekase, Bong, Shei Ashai, Amrachai, Je Potimanga Bizibi Shakar, Makamota. The AJ Protom, when I buy the Kuno, Rasto Prodan, Amad Bangladesh, Astese, Mongtini Amad, Horisat Mondire, Puja Corben, Amadaka Sotom to another Bogorbe. Amra Kup Kushi, Barto Podan Monte Asekane, Amra Teshkubanunditu. Classified as a scheduled caste. Matuas are Namoshudros or lower caste Hindu refugees who have migrated to West Bengal from Bangladesh over many decades since partition. The Matuas constitute 17.4% of the total scheduled caste population in Bengal. That amounts to around 1.8 crore people spread across North 24 and South 24 Parganas, Nodia, Jalpaiguri, Kujbihar, and several districts. In North 24 Pagnas, there are over 33 assembly constituencies, out of which the Trinobul Congress won 27 in 2016. But the TMC lost 12 of these assembly segments to the BJP in 2019 Lok Sabha polls, primarily because Matuas backed the Saffron Party. In the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, the BJP won four of the 10 seats reserved for the scheduled caste. It had offered the Matua migrants citizenship under the Citizenship Amendment Act. From Prime Minister Modi touching Matua matriarch's feet during 2019 Lok Sabha polls, to Home Minister Amit Shah having lunch with Matua community leaders during his visit last year, the BJP is leaving no stone unturned to consolidate its votes among the community in this big Bengal battle. The stage is set here in Thakurbari. If you see behind me, preparations underway to welcome Prime Minister Narendra Modi. That's the stage that he'll come to to address the Matua community. If you look at the chairs, it is quite interesting. They have kept the COVID restrictions in mind and ensured that there is no 
way that there is any criticism coming, the Indian administration or Indian missions way when it comes to how this event was managed and handled. But it is going to be significant because it's 27th March when Prime Minister Narendra Modi is going to be over here addressing the Matwa community. With British journalist Pawan Kumar in Thakurbari, Geeta Mohan for India Today. So that's the political twist in a strategically important visit and partnership. But what is this relationship all about? When Bangladesh says that this is the golden era of the relationship or never in the past 50 years has this relationship been better. Joining me on India First, the finest voices on India-Bangladesh relations. I have Ambassador Veena Sikri, India's former High Commissioner to Bangladesh joining me on the show. I have Ambassador Shamsher Mubin Chaudhary, former Foreign Secretary of Bangladesh, joining me on the show. I also have India Today's Foreign Affairs Editor Geeta Mohan joining us live from Dhaka. But before I come to my guests, let's quickly take a look at the day's highlights, the key developments when Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Sheikh Hasina, where they talked about walking hand in hand, a shared destiny, a shared past and a shared future. <music> Prime Minister Narendra Modi's neighborhood first push in Bangladesh. Joy Bangla, Jai Hind slogans echo in Dhaka. Joy Bangla, Joy Hind. On day one of his first foreign tour since the coronavirus pandemic, Prime Minister Modi attended the Golden Jubilee celebrations of the Bangladesh Liberation War. The Prime Minister handed over the Gandhi Peace Prize Award, accorded posthumously to Bangladesh founder Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, to his daughters Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and Sheikh Rihana. <laughs> Bangladesh Swadin Hokar Rayega. Kisi me itni shakti nahi hai ki Bangladesh ko daba kar de rakh sake. Main aabhar prakat Prime Minister also hailed Indira Gandhi's role during the 1971 war. Tatkalin Pradhan Mantri Srimati Indira Gandhi ji ke prayas aur unki mahatvapurn bhumi ka sarva vidit hai. In his address, Prime Minister Modi called for a united effort to fight terror, taking a whale dig at Pakistan. The Prime Minister again aimed at Pakistan without naming it while signing the visitor's book at the Martyrs Memorial. He called the liberation of Bangladesh the victory of truth and courage over deceit and oppression. In the pandemic world, Modi pushed for vaccine diplomacy. Bharat ko is baat ki baat khushi hai ki made in India vaccines Bangladesh ke hamare both India and Bangladesh are set to ink at least five MOUs during the Prime Minister's visit. Visiting Dhaka on a crucial day when Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the country are celebrating 100 years of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's birth anniversary and 50 years of Bangladesh's liberation, it is a clear message that India and Bangladesh are going to go hand in hand. There are concerns, but there is a lot more of cooperation and advantage in Dhaka and New Delhi coming together and moving forward. And that's what the message from Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in his visit to Dhaka this time around. Visit journalist Pavan Kumar in Dhaka, Geeta Mohan for India Today. So we will talk about the cooperation. We will also highlight the concerns when it comes to India-Bangladesh relations. But Ambassador Sikri, if I may begin with you. Uh, when the Prime Minister talks about a shared destiny, shared future and past, uh, is connectivity in your appreciation the key that takes this relationship forward, whether it's rail, road or waterways, ma'am? 
I think uh, connectivity and infrastructure development have really become the linchpin of uh, Bangladesh-India cooperation. And it is uh, to the credit of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina that she has recognized in this a great opportunity for Bangladesh as well. And she now uh, sees that the connectivity projects, as you said, by rail, by road and water, are not only good for Bangladesh, not only good for India, but they're good for the sub-regional cooperation. So you have the BBIN, the Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal grouping uh, within SARC, which is going to be based on connectivity. The railway line coming from Nepal uh, through India to Bangladesh and then taking goods to the Bay of Bengal and similarly from Bhutan through India to Bangladesh. And we have seen very recently, a week or 10 days ago, the, the Maitri Bridge uh, over the River Feni being inaugurated virtually by our two prime ministers, which brings the northeast of India just 80 kilometers from Chittagong port. And you can have uh, Bangladesh has now given India the use of Chittagong and Mongla ports. Uh, from Calcutta, it's a day or two days sailing to Chittagong. Goods can be put onto trucks and brought 80 kilometers to the border of Tripura and then into the Northeast. Now, the point is, this is good for Indian products and for connectivity with Northeast. But it opens up the economy of Bangladesh okay. for their interaction with Northeast, for them selling uh, goods to Northeast, uh, whether it is agricultural products or food products, and then processing, uh, say, bamboo products, bamboo from the Northeast in Bangladesh and selling to the rest of India. This also opens up Bangladesh to Southeast Asia connectivity. Okay. And Bangladesh has requested India to join the India, Myanmar, Thailand uh, trilateral highway, which will take Bangladesh straight into the Southeast Asian uh, countries and Southeast Asian markets. Very recently, uh, a week or two weeks ago, there was a World Bank report which has said that that um, the con connectivity and infrastructure development between India and Bangladesh has the potential to add 17% plus to the GDP of Bangladesh and 7% plus to the GDP of India. Yes. So really, it is this mutual benefit uh, which is being developed through these connectivity projects. And as the regional and sub-regional cooperation develop, this okay. is becoming more and more evident and more and more important, equally important for both countries. Recently, um, exports from Bangladesh to India have you know, started the way we look at it from people. India, Ambassador Chaudhary, yes. And, and Sorry, which I is didn't. what the Prime Minister also wrote about, uh, you know, in that edit where he hoped, uh, uh, you know, uh, goods would, would come by water all the way up to Varanasi. Uh, but Ambassador Chaudhary, if I may, how does Bangladesh view the Prime Minister's visit, his first in COVID times, the first country is Bangladesh that he visits, sir? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think this was the first time I'm on your uh, network. And it's nice to have my friend Veena Sikri also at the other end. Um, I, uh, I definitely have always been an optimist in, the, uh, in moving the very critical relationship between Bangladesh and India, India which is a very solid historical base also, uh, to move this relationship forward. And as Veena said, that yes, connectivity has become the keyword, the buzzword that has facilitated... Uh, 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 it has provided a major input into uh, connecting not just the two countries, but connecting the peoples of the two countries. When I say connecting two peoples of the countries, I do not mean, you know, people moving to Kolkata and uh, Assam and Shillong as tourists. It's much more than that. Uh, the other day, a uh, very, uh, quite a sizable Bangladeshi cargo ship uh, carried a whole lot of processed food products, which Veena spoke about. Uh, from Bangladesh across the uh, border into uh, Assam uh, by river. So, you know, Bangladesh is a river and country. I mean, all of Bengal is a deltaic region, and we have used yes. the rivers as modes of transport for centuries. So this is like going back. Uh, it's like, in film terms, I could say back to the future, in the sense that we are moving to a mode of, um, as we have multimodal uh, you know, connectivity is happening. So this is a mode of transportation that I have always advocated because it is ecologically friendly, it is economical, and you can move uh, more goods more easily. Now, Prime Minister Modi said, you know, boats going all the way to Varnas, which is a great thing if this can happen. Because uh, I was arguing in another program uh, a couple of hours ago that when trade develops, okay. 
the areas that which this trade goes through, and history has shown that if you go back even to the Roman civilization or uh, Persian civilization, you'll see that the development of the areas, the cities, the people, is always linked to the movement of trade. The more trade you have, the more economic oh, activity as, is, as a dividend to the people concerned. And even famous Chinese uh, uh, you know, navigator, uh, Cheng He, said that five, six hundred years ago. So I'm, I'm very optimistic that this is moving forward. Now, the other thing in a more general context, I think the opportunities for strengthening this bilateral relationship is enormous. Uh, the political will is there uh, on both sides of the border. We, and we can really exploit that political will to our mutual advantage. Uh, the, the, the opportunities are massive. Because, Geeta, uh, this is a relationship. But the challenges, You're absolutely but the challenges right, Ambassador. are also... And this no, is a Goro, relationship. Uh, the challenges are also yes, not sir? in short supply. I mean, there are a lot of challenges also. Go on. So we also have to address those challenges so that development of our relationship, strengthening our relationship, touches the people on both sides of the border. Development becomes durable when the people oh, are absolutely. And I'll come to politics. challenges in just a moment, sir. Absolutely. And, sure. you know, no one's running away from the, from the challenges and they are enormous at this stage. But as you very rightly pointed out, the leadership in both countries, strong, democratic, mandate, they have the mandate and they have a desire to move forward. Uh, Geeta, key takeaways of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit and interaction with Sheikh Hasina. Of course, they had a virtual summit a couple of months ago, but meeting face to face. What next now? Well, day one was all about the Mujibur, uh, Mujibur show uh, celebrations and the uh, 50 years of liberation war where India played a very important role and that's the reason why you see the kind of speeches both the Prime Ministers made were quite uh, quite something in terms of the content. Uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was rather emotional in that speech and uh, thanked uh, India profusely when it comes to India's contribution in the attainment of that independence uh, for Bangladesh. Having said that, uh, there are a few important takeaways. Uh, day one was about the celebrations, but also a few announcements were made. Uh, one, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke about how 50 entrepreneurs can come and take advantage of the startups in India and engage with the uh, startups and, and professionals in India. Uh, secondly, a scholarship was announced uh, uh, given the celebrations and the kind of importance India attaches, not just for uh, students, but also for uh, for officers. So that's a very key uh, statement, uh, announcement that was made during the speech. We we're also given to understand uh, while there was a me they were together all day uh, today, uh, apart from the fact that there were meetings with the uh, with other leaders of the political diaspora, BNP completely conspicuous with its absence. Uh, they all they boycotted the meeting with the opposition leaders, but Indian uh, the Indian Prime Minister did connect with the diaspora, the minority community community, uh, opposition leaders, alliance partners. Day two is going okay. to be about cultural engagement, but also the bilateral talk. Now, what we're given to understand is two very important things that are coming out of that talk. One are the MOUs that are going to be signed, uh, which also includes announcement and inauguration of a passenger train between uh, India and Bangladesh, which will be inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. And secondly, uh, the gift of 1.2 million vaccine okay. doses that Prime Minister brought along with him, which would be handed over to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. So significant developments when it comes to uh, a, a meeting that has come just very close to a virtual summit that took place not so long ago. So, and, and you know, now let's focus on the challenges ahead. Ambassador Sikri, in your appreciation as far as India is concerned, what are the big challenges? Are we concerned about China's increasing footprint, attempted increasing footprint, uh, Pakistan once again trying to uh, make inroads in Bangladesh? Is that perhaps one of the biggest challenges as far as India is concerned? Well, <clears throat> I think uh, there are... There are challenges. We have to recognize them in order to be able to meet them. And I think one of the challenges before I come to China and Pakistan is to sustain the, the speed and progress with which projects with Bangladesh have been implemented. 
a, a lot of the success in the uh, developmental cooperation between India and Bangladesh in the last uh, few years has been that decisions are taken and quickly implemented. This gives the people the sense that they are benefiting from the decisions and not waiting in a long distance future for that. So that is one very important challenge and, and certainly the new plans we will hear tomorrow will add to that challenge. The second is the sensitive issues. Water resources is one of them. There is TISTA, which is there. Water resources is a very sensitive issue. But I think we should start talking about river yes. basin management, about how we can cooperate to manage the use of water, whether it's the TISTA or other rivers, so that we don't have such a problem of dry season shortages and oversupply and flooding in the rainy season. So this is a big challenge which we have to face. There are other issues about which Bangladesh is sensitive, like the border killings, which we need to uh, coordinate in a proper way so that they, it doesn't become sensitive issues. Then we come to the issue of China and Pakistan. Certainly, China has been very, very aggressive in, in uh, Bangladesh, as it has been in Sri Lanka and earlier in Maldives and so on, and trying very much to muscle in and make themselves an indispensable presence. Uh, Xi Jinping was in, in uh, Bangladesh about five years ago, six years ago in 2015, announced $40 billion. But nothing much has actually uh, come to pass. Uh, and uh, we did see uh, statements by uh, foreign policy advisor to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina this morning that they do recognize uh, the problems in developing the cooperation with China. They do recognize the problems created like Humber and Tota Port in Sri Lanka has been taken over by China on a 99-year lease and so on. So, so there is a lot of care to be done. But I think that as long as India keeps ahead doing these people-to-people -people projects in a positive way and carries it on in a quick implementation mode, this will be all right. As far as Pakistan is concerned, China and Pakistan have begun some kind of a coordinated approach in Bangladesh, and this is likely to be very um, difficult and sensitive, but okay. Pakistan always works through the radical groups in Bangladesh and tries to radicalize the people and tell them that, look, Islam is what it is and, you know, you don't get influenced by the others. Now, I think Bangladesh values its secular heritage. Yes. And uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has brought the term secularism back into the constitution. She constantly reminds the people, even today and earlier, about history as it actually happened and the role of India. So I think this this important focus on secularism, on carrying all communities along, is a very important one. And this value system uh, cherished by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is very important for Bangladesh, for India, and for the entire uh, South Asian neighborhood. So I think okay. this is another important reason why we keep up uh, oh, the cooperation with Bangladesh. We have shared values on this vital issue. You know, because today we see uh, what not being secular has done to Pakistan. And, uh, you know, Pakistani newspapers are writing editorials, Ambassador Chaudhary, about how Bangladesh was a part of Pakistan 50 years ago and where Bangladesh has reached today and where Pakistan has been left behind on major indices, uh, you know, whether it's healthcare, education, economy, uh, and, and so many others. And they are lamenting the fact that they haven't been able to... Uh, you know, keep up with Bangladesh. But in your appreciation, sir, when it comes to India-Bangladesh relations, what are the major challenges? And in your appreciation, would things like CAA and NRC also come up in India-Bangladesh talks, sir? I don't think uh, the NRC or the CAA would formally come up, come up uh, in the discussion uh, as such. Uh, one can always argue that uh, technically these are internal uh, matters of India, and India, of course, has all the sovereign right to amend its constitution. Uh, the question that is being asked in Bangladesh, even by friends of India, and even our prime minister has hinted at that, uh, is that as much as the Citizenship Amendments Act is a domestic issue, but when the name of Bangladesh is mentioned in that uh, amendment, which becomes part of a constitution, it does not strictly remain an internal issue anymore. Because you have in the process, and I'm being very candid as a good friend of India, and Veena knows that uh, even in spite of the difficulties I had as foreign secretary uh, trying to uh, you know, uh, move things forward, uh, Veena was the high commissioner here, and we together on our own, we tried to work very closely, he had problems. Uh, the fact remains that you know, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina at a, a news event in, I think, Abu Dhabi, 
uh, after the CAA was enacted, said that what was the necessity of this? No, she didn't criticize it. She just questions its necessity. So this is, okay. it'll come time, it'll be hanging in there, but nobody will mention it. But I think the relationship goes uh, much, much uh, beyond okay. that. And, and, and so it should, because there is a fundamental commitment to, you know, uh, to economic development, to uh, working together hand in hand and uh, moving the agenda forward. Uh, there's always the uh, talk uh, in India, and justifiably so, that is Bangladesh facing the challenge of trying to strike a balance between India uh, and China. And I have spoken on that extensively uh, in Singapore, in India, in Bangladesh too. I, I don't think there even should be a question of trying to seek a balance. Okay. The Bangladesh-India relationship is founded on blood. And there is no other comparison to that. The, prob the problem, the main challenge is keep the momentum forward. Now, what is getting left out in our discussions today? That India's very successful vaccine diplomacy, if I want to, if I'm allowed to use that word, has a tremendous impact on Bangladesh. You know, India itself faces major challenges in being able to vaccinate its own citizens, given the size of the population, the huge number of infections. And yet, you already have gifted 2 million uh, doses and Prime Minister Modi is going to hand over 1 million plus tomorrow. This, in spite of the demand that you have in India and in spite yes. of the fact that India is trying to put a ban on export because the demand in India is so high. And then we source another 500 million from India, uh, you know, commercially. So this is something that, uh, given the health situation that we are all passing through. You see, health security, since the COVID hit us, health security has been bought the equation of international relations. Okay. We talked of water security before, we talked of food security before, we talked of terrorism, security against terrorism, military security, but health security, because we are fighting a microbe which is not visible, and no amount of guns or aircraft can control it. But India came forward. India came oh, forward, not in the, in the case of Bangladesh, but in the case of other neighboring countries, but in a very big way in the case of Bangladesh. And I think I, I, I am very proud, my family, we all took the AstraZeneca or the uh, COVID shield that India provided. And uh, we are very happy that more and more people in Bangladesh are getting vaccinated. I'm so, so glad, this is sir. A and, new and element has health. been brought into the, into the uh, uh, discourse. Okay. Geeta, when, when the two prime ministers meet tomorrow, before Prime Minister Narendra Modi heads out uh, uh, to Orakandi, to the uh, you know, uh, Hari uh, temple there, uh, what are the challenges that are likely to be taken up? Well, uh, it's the other way around. He's first going to do the temple visits and visit the mausoleum of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Gaurav and after which he'll come back to Dhaka and then the bilateral talks will be held. Uh, uh, important over here to note is the fact that uh, in an interview to us, Gaurav Rizvi, the advisor on uh, international relations to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, very clearly spelled out that uh, CA and NRC are not issues that are going to be raised by the Bangladeshi administration. Uh, by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, and that's what former Foreign Secretary Mobin uh, also has uh, reiterated. He's somebody who not so long ago was handling uh, yes. India-Bangladesh issues as also uh, handling foreign policy for Bangladesh, and uh, that is certainly true. But when it comes to Tista, Tista is an area that is of political importance to Sheikh Hasina Gaurav. It is going to be the elephant in the room. Why? Because, uh, again, it is not going to be something that is going to be discussed in this meeting. Uh, the meeting is going to be very brief. It's not going to be as uh, uh, as as uh, detailed as it was in, during the virtual summit in December, and that's the reason why maybe it would not come up. But it is an area where India, where Bangladesh has been insisting that uh, there is an agreement in place. It just needs implementation, and for the implementation to take place, uh, the centre really yes. has to work with Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee. In no uncertain words, uh, terms, uh, Gohar Rizvi said that. To to me in an in, in the interview today uh, that it is between the state and the center they need to resolve matters it might not be resolved uh, anytime soon but he does expect that these stuff will be concluded uh, okay. sometime in the near future Well, let's see what happens after the 2nd of May uh, stay with me for a moment when Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke of uh, you know the blood that Indians have shed, the fact that, uh, you know, Ambassador Chaudhary, you just mentioned that our relationship is the relationship of blood. Well, 
In his address, the Prime Minister spoke of those who had not just made the supreme sacrifice of their lives, but also those who fought very well and ensured the liberation of Bangladesh in that 13-day blitz as the Indian Army reached Dhaka and 93,000 Pakistani soldiers led by Lieutenant General A.A.K. Niazi surrendered at Dhaka. As Bangladesh marked 50 years since the liberation war, remembering the braves of Mukti Bahini who shed their blood in the quest for a free Bangladesh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi attended the solemn occasion paying tributes to the Indian braves who rubbed shoulders with the fighters of Mukti Bahini to liberate Bangladesh from Pakistan in 1971. The instrument of surrender was signed in Dhaka at 16.31 hours. Lance Naik Albert Eka, Group Captain Chandan Singh, Captain Mohan Narayan Rao Samant, as an unginet, Kitane hi veer hai, Jinke Netrutwa, or Sahaski Kathai, Hame Prerit Karti. With Modi invoking the names of India's immortal braves, 50 years of relations got their most honorable tribute yet. Bureau Report, India Today. There's another point that Prime Minister Narendra Modi raised. He spoke of Operation Searchlight and the fact that not many people talk about it today. But this perhaps was Pakistan Army at its worst against the people of then East Pakistan, now Bangladesh. What was Operation Searchlight? Pakistan Army carried out a genocide against the people of now Bangladesh. There was a massacre at Dhaka University. Young students and teachers were eliminated, lined up and shot dead. And that massacre continued. 200,000 women raped, 10 million people displaced, 2 million by some accounts killed. Yahya Khan is learned to have said, kill 3 million, the rest will be eating out of your hands. Let's listen in to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. यहां पाकिस्तान की सेना ने जो जदन्य अपराध और अत्याचार किए वो तस्वीरें विचलित करती थी कई दिन तक सोने नहीं देती थी गोविंद अहंकर जी ने कहा था एक शागोर एक शागोर रोकतेर बिनिमोए Ambassador Chaudhary, the sacrifices made by the people of Bangladesh, which led to the ultimate liberation of Bangladesh, uh, the guilty have still not been brought to book and Pakistan yet to apologize for Operation Searchlight. Uh, first of all, I was a, a lieutenant in the Pakistan Army in 1971, and I had got commissioned in Pakistan Army two years before that. Uh, on the 25th of March, at, after midnight on 1971, I was one of the very first to have mutinied or joined a mutiny against the Pakistan Army. So any reference to the events of 1971 touches me very, very deeply emotionally because uh, uh, 
I fought. I lost a part of my leg. I still walk uh, with a very uh, pronounced limp. But that is my pride. Uh, that is my pride that uh, I, I, I could uh, play a role in the freedom of my country. Uh, and every time uh, anybody mentions, especially from outside Bangladesh, about that particular period, the degree of sacrifice our people were willing to make, the kind of courage, bravery, patriotism our people had shown when we were totally disorganized, we had no way to even plan how to fight uh, uh, an army as strong as Pakistan, who were far, far better equipped than us uh, and had all the uh, necessary wherewithal. But still, we took them on. And then on, in December, the Indian Army uh, came and joined uh, uh, with us, and we fought together. But the Indian Army's role, the Indian government's role, actually dates back uh, much longer than 3rd of December. You know, our people were being trained inside India, uh, were being provided for. We had a government in exile yes. uh, based in Kolkata. Uh, uh, we had freedom fighters being commissioned uh, during the war in, in 1971 from Murti camp. So it's a much, much, and plus the fact that 10 million yes. Bangladeshi refugees were found shelter uh, in India. So we, we recall those days. And also a credit to the uh, absolutely marvelous uh, diplomacy that Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had demonstrated at that time in creating world opinion that, an in, that, that India had to intervene and that it kind of uh, validated uh, everything after that. So uh, even your uh, the current external affairs minister, Jay Shankar, in his book, India to India Way, has mentioned 1972, India's role in 1971 in Bangladesh is one of the major, major, in fact, the major success story of Indian diplomacy, of Indian foreign policy, both in terms of diplomacy and in terms of military victory. So we are very, very uh, touched when that period is mentioned. I'd just like to add, just make one small uh, correction here, Gautam, if I may. When you talk of 93,000 Pakistani soldiers, actually it was 53,000 Pakistani soldiers and 40,000 were non-military. But that included the the, uh, the Razakars and all the non-combatants. But the fact is, to, to see a Pakistani general swallow his pride and sign a document of surrender uh, right in the, in the very venue from where Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman on 7th of March said that this time our struggle is for our freedom, yes. for our liberation and for our independence. My only issue here, and, and as a friend of India, I will say that, uh, and I hope you'll not take it otherwise, that I wish Bangladesh was a co-signatory to that witness, uh, to that surrender document, you know, because we fought side by side. I, I, perhaps it would have made a completion. I'm not going to make an issue. Oh, absolutely. Of it, Bangladesh fought as, as side fighter, by side. I, the Mukti I Jodhas. Feel, but we are eternally, eternally grateful yes. uh, to the government yes. and the armed forces of India for the sacrifices they made, the decision they took, and they stood by our side at our most, most critical moment. Ambassador Sikri, you know, your closing comments on, on Operation Searchlight and the fact that future generations must know how close this bond is between the people of India and the people of Bangladesh. And in your appreciation, will this only make our relationship even stronger in the times to come? Yes, definitely. As it is, we have seen that uh, during the time when uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had been now the last three consecutive terms, this tremendous awareness that has come among the people of Bangladesh about their own history, which actually was changed and sought to be hidden, and the constitution was amended in the years uh, following the death, the cruel assassination of yes. uh, father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Bhutibu Rahman. And uh, children were, were just not growing up aware of what had happened in Bangladesh. But what Ambassador Chaudhary has uh, so uh, correctly and so emotionally uh, uh, narrated to us is very moving. And now the people of Bangladesh know about it. And every day they're becoming more and more aware because more and more research is being done. First, Muntasir Mamoon is there in Bangladesh, was here in Delhi just recently telling us about the research that he's doing on the genocide. How even today more and more facts are coming to notice about how cruel that genocide was, what happened to the women, what happened to the people of Bangladesh. And uh, 
children are today learning history as it happened. This is a great contribution to the strengthening of the relations between India and Bangladesh. And even in India, we should reciprocate it by, by doing our own research, by bringing it out into the open, and by at every stage talking yes. about the joint benefit. Because I think the three biggest, uh, the three biggest bases or foundation of the friendship between India and Bangladesh is mutual trust, mutual respect, and mutual yes. benefit. And if we work on these three bases, then we ensure that, you know, whatever Absolutely. we decide to get, I will let that be the last word on the show. Absolutely, ma'am. You know, and it was such a privilege to have you, Ambassador Veena Sikri and Ambassador uh, Shamsher Chaudhary on the broadcast. Such a privilege, sir, also to know that you were a war veteran and you were wounded in that war for the liberation of Bangladesh. A privilege to have had you on the broadcast. Many thanks for joining me here on India First. A quick break. Lots for coming up. Stay with us. Hello, everyone. This is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.